January was a weird month for me. A couple of the books that I read were pretty good. A couple of the books I read were so-so. One of the books that I read drove me absolutely insane, but it's really strange because at the end of the month, the feeling that I was left with was just like, that sucked. As I had talked about in my goals video for 2019, my big goal for the year is to read as many big books as possible. So I kicked off 2019 with The Mother of All Big Books, uh, The Lord of the Rings by J.R.R. Tolkien, or should I say m most of The Lord of the Rings because I DNF this at a certain point because I just, I don't know, I just couldn't do it. This was like one of the most sad reading experiences of my life. I was just struck with this feeling of like, this isn't mine anymore. I don't think this is for me anymore. The language felt so archaic. I felt so disconnected to it that it like really bothered me for a long while. Um, I thought about it all month. I just couldn't get over the fact that I'm at a point in my life where, where Lord of the Rings just isn't for me anymore. And is that a permanent thing? Is that going to go away? Is there an ebb and flow to it? Am I going to pick it up in a couple of years and love it? Possibly. But right now, it doesn't feel like that. There are so many other fantasy series or big epic books that fit with my personality a little more. The language is, 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 is more something that I'm looking for. I just, I couldn't get over how stilted it was and it was childish at other times. Like Frodo at one point, I remember says to Gandalf fairly early, like, like Gandalf is telling Frodo about the ring and that he's going to have to uh, go and take it to, to Mount Doom and destroy this. Fro Frodo says, and this is just like a, per this is just a perfect example of how the language is used in this book. Frodo says to Gandalf, Oh, Gandalf, best of friends, what am I to do? Like, that's not, that's not how anyone talks or that's not how, like the type of, dialogue I'm looking for in a book anymore. It's I get that it's doing this on purpose and it's supposed to um, feel a certain way and feel more traditional or classic than um, than most fantasy books but I'm just I'm not there anymore. I'm just I I'm trying not to feel bad about it. I just feel so bad about it. It's weird like I just it's like I miss it already like I'm never gonna get that feeling back of what the Lord of the Rings felt like when I first read it or the second time that I read it. It just, ugh, it just sucked. I'm just like, I still haven't been able to get over it and I, I don't know if I'm going to anytime soon. It was just, I had to put it down because it just made me sad and yeah, but not half as sad as this next book. I listened to Stephen King's The Stand, which is a 53 hour audiobook. It's gigantic. It's one of the biggest books that's ever been written. I got 18 or 19 hours into this thing, and honestly, the plot, like the central plot, hadn't even really started yet, and I just lost my shit at this point. I, I DNF'd it. Again, I DNF'd another book. Like, 20 hours into this thing. This That's like 500 pages into this book, basically, and I still don't consider the plot to really have started. I was, this is the first Stephen King book that I ever truly tried to read. I haven't been this mad at an author in so long. I'm just, like, if this is how he writes, holy crap, anyone, you can take him. Whoever out there is watching this that loves Stephen King, you can have him. This was the most infuriating reading experience I've had in the last year for sure. And I, I can't get over it. Like, I hated this experience so much because the, the the concept of the stand sounds so fun it just it dragged and dragged and dragged and it's just like when when you write a book they say you're supposed to start the book at the last moment that you can basically like if I started past this point it's not gonna make sense to anybody like this is the point where this is the last point I can start it because that like propels you into the action faster that way he didn't do that he spent he could have started this book past the like 500 pages I read and then just call back to some things in the past and fill in some gaps later. But he just, he started at the start and just went 
chronologically, and it was so boring. Like, oh my, oh my god, it was so boring. I don't feel remotely bad about this one. I, I, I could have burned that book if I had a physical copy of it. I'm so furious still. Ugh. Next, I read a book that I kind of liked. This was probably like a three out of five star for me. Uh, and that's The Singing Sword by Jack White. Uh, this is the second book in a series called The Camelot Chronicles, which is about basically a recontextualizing of the King Arthur myth in kind of um, more of a historic setting. I read and talked about the first book, um, The Sky Stone, in a couple of videos before. So this was the uh, the sequel to it, it's the book two out of a nine book series. It wasn't nearly as good. This one felt like it was kind of getting from point A to point C. Like it was just getting you to two, between two places and then I think the next book will will ramp up finally because this just felt like it was kind of filling in some gaps that I think that could have just been explained later. I think this whole, the whole timeline of this book could have just been reiterated in a, in a chapter in the next book basically, but what are you going to do? It was okay. It was fun. The, the characters and the setting are great, and I love Jack White, so uh, it was enjoyable. It just wasn't nearly as good as the first one, but I'll keep reading the series for sure. After that, I went back into the big book well and read uh, A Book of American Martyrs by Joyce Carol Oates. This was on the recommendation of Jasmine from Jazz and Reads, so thanks, Jasmine. This was fun. Um, really interesting topic. Um, kind of gets into the whole abortion debate, especially in the, in the United States with the kind of the political divide that's going on right now. It's kind of one of these perfect microcosms of these two very disparate ideologies trying to work at the same time. Uh, this is my first Joyce Carol Oates book and really, really enjoyed her writing. I th like this was like, it's like a 700 and some page book. Um, didn't feel that long at all. Probably till the end. The second half of the book not nearly as strong as the first half of the book. It ended up being probably a three out of five, maybe three and a half out of five for me, because the whole abortion philosophical debate that happens is essentially between these um, hardcore right-wing Christians who think that abortion is murder, basically, and they, um, or this one guy, kills an abortion doctor, and then the story is essentially about their two families, the, the, the killer and the guy who died, it's about their two families and the next kind of generation that happens. The Christian side of things was just, it wasn't nearly as nuanced as I wish it was. It was such a like simplistic personification of kind of like Christian evil. I just didn't, I get that that is possibly accurate. The people who really think these things might actually be like this and think that black and white and think that like so illogically but in terms of reading a 700 page book that ideology was boring and it wasn't uh it never really caused me to kind of question how i thought or go back and forth on a debate you're you're pretty clearly um in the liberal camp at the start of this and you are at the end of this and there's a whole kind of side plot that happens later where his daughter becomes this boxer and it's it's stupid. Yeah, she kind of ran out of track a little bit and uh, and stumbled towards the end. But uh, glad I read it. Um, really cool idea. So Jasmine, thanks again for uh, the recommendation. But I didn't like it quite as much as you. Because I live in Canada and it's stupid, I'm already starting to lose my light here. So I might breeze through these last few. Uh, pretty quickly because it's our it's only 520 in the afternoon and it's almost dark already and in the next like 15 minutes I think I'm gonna lose all my light completely so I'm gonna maybe blaze through these last few this next one is not something I typically read at all but I found it kind of randomly in the bookstore and it was just the most beautiful thing I've ever seen and ever since I've been become obsessed with this artist um, Caspar David Friedrich he's a uh, he was a German painter um, who I just, I love going to the bookstore with my wife because she's really interested in architecture and art. So she takes me to like a part of the bookstore that I just never go by myself. And uh, we were kind of wandering through there a, a couple of weeks ago and I just stumbled upon this book that just, see if I can show you some of them. Like, it's just like a, this massive uh, book of his life and it shows so many of his paintings. 
And I'm just like, I don't know, I'm just like obsessed with him. He does these gigantic like landscape, like environmental kind of paintings. I don't know if you can see that. They're just so, it's just, they're so beautiful and they're so cool. And the cover of his, which is maybe my favorite painting of his, it's actually used as the cover to um, a book called, um, I think it's called The Last Man by Mary Shelley, which is about uh, the, like a plague kind of hits the world in the, the, the 1800s and only one man survives. And um, this is used as the Folio Society cover of the book. So kind of a funny tie in there, but um, I'm not finished reading it yet. It's, it's a pretty big book and there's quite a bit of his life to go through, but oh, it's so beautiful and I love it so much. It's like, it's like a total five star book. Next as just a little um, palate cleanser again, after reading another big book in a uh, Book of American Martyrs. I read book two in the uh, Fables series, which is a graphic novel series. Fables is amazing. Like, this is this is the one that I was told that it's a little bit of a um, one you kind of have to get through. Once you get to volume three, um, the series really takes off. I kind of get what that person was talking about, because the start of it starts a little slow, but it builds to this pretty big crescendo considering this is just really the start of the series. The the last uh, issue in this, I think it collects like, it's a deluxe hardcover, so it collects probably 12 or 13 issues. The last issue is one of my favorite issues of a comic book I've ever read in my whole life. It's it's basically the fables um, leaving their, their fable land to come to Earth the last couple of days while that, like this big siege is happening on their castle while they're trying to escape. It was just, it was phenomenal. It's like, this was like a movie quality drama going on with this massive epic scope. And it's like, this is, a, this is issue like 23 of a series. It's amazing. And then after I read Fables Volume 2, I read two books um, out of the six that I'm reading for the Book 2 Prize Round 1 Judging. But I'm not allowed to talk about them yet. So my round of judging is finished at the end of March. And I have to kind of keep those books a secret till the end of March. So I don't kind of persuade any of my other judges to, to vote a certain way. So, oh my God, this is getting so dark. I don't, ugh, I feel like the video is going to move so slow because the, there's, there's just no light in here. So that's basically what I read in January. It wasn't like an awful reading month by any means, but the big thing with January is that I have realized, like, I feel like an idiot because uh, I do this all the time. I create these kind of reading challenges for myself and I absolutely hate reading challenges. I hate um, feeling like I have a roadmap with my reading and that I can't read based on my whims at all. And, and that's where I find the books that I really love and that's the style of reading that I really like. And I didn't really realize that was happening until I started reading a collection of short stories with Matthew Sharapa this week. It's going fantastic and it just was this random um, book injected into my life and it's just been so much fun reading it and it's been so nice and light not having to pick up like figuratively and literally this giant heavy weighty book every time I pick up a book. Like what I realized very quickly in January that the specialness of a big book is um, kind of wasted if you keep reading big books. It's like a big book has something special to it because it feels big, it feels different, it feels like you're getting into something um, epic and powerful. But if that's all you're reading, those feelings are diminished. and. So I'm very quickly realizing this whole idea of reading big books all year long is so stupid and it's gonna make me miserable. And my goal this year was to read more books that I just wanted to read and not and not books that I felt like I had to read. And already I feel so constricted by this weird big book schedule that I've set for myself, which is fine. Like giving up on that challenge is totally fine. I give up on them all the time. But the big thing is that I promised to buddy read a bunch of these books with people, so um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to most of them. But I'll contact people individually who I've kind of set up buddy reads with to see um, 
if they maybe want to read a different book with me or if they don't want to buddy read it all, if they kind of want to punt out of it, that's okay. Um, there's still a few that I definitely still want to read. There's there's probably four or five big books that I definitely know that I'm going to read this year. So we'll see how it goes. It just was kind of upsetting to me that um, this venture lasted a month and now I'm, and I'm already like, I hate this. So January fucking sucked, basically. It just it was really depressing and I already miss Goodreads, and I said I wasn't going to use Goodreads all year, even though I'm, like, tracking my books in a spreadsheet, so there's, like, no difference. So I might just go back on Goodreads in, like, a week. I don't know. My whole goals video, I feel like, was such a waste of my time now and everyone else's time who watched it. I feel like I'm not going to... So It's so much darker in here than I thought. This is a... I have a laptop down here that just went off, and then all my light disappeared. My light's going, so I'm going to cut this short. January was tough. February has started off so well, and I'm having so much fun reading shorter books. So hopefully I get this uh, this reading year back on track. If you have a, a January wrap-up video, I'd love to watch it. Let me know what you're reading. Comment below. Tell me what you think. All that stuff. Like, subscribe, whatever, or not. Who cares? As always, thank you guys so much for listening to any of this. I appreciate all of you. You're all fantastic, and I hope you're having a great reading week. I'll talk to you soon. Hopefully in the light. Bye!